Hello, I'm Mark Baer. You're watching the Your Town Television Program. My guest, international opera star, retired, <laughs> Louis Leverts. Louis, <laughs> you're retired. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are again. Retired. You never retire. No, you no. Know. Now we've just, uh, yeah. And there's no pension. There's not much pension, no. and uh, and we're, uh, but we get to golf more. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, and you got new clubs. But I digress. Yes, <laughs> I guess they want to hear about opera. So let's talk about uh, Ollie, because you've been uh, teaching some courses there, and that's fabulous. That uh, came out of nowhere. Um, I belong to this group, which I'm very proud to announce. It's called the Old Man's Democrat Club. We have lunch every other Thursday, <clears throat> and um, one of the members asked me if uh, I would like to work at this Ollie program, Oster Lifelong Learning Institute which goes to Cal State Monterey Bay, and it's classes, university-level classes for people over 55, but there's no grades, there's no finals, you know. It's just come there, be enlightened, or don't show up. You know, you can cut class, nobody cares, you know. So the first class that I taught there was a voice class for singers of all types. And I had, I started out with 14, I ended up with 17, which is rare. And from that, <clears throat> She asked me if I would like to start doing an opera program. Now, the Metropolitan Opera has been showing these high-definition operas for quite a few years now. And so I picked three a semester, and with uh, my very good friend and colleague, Maestro Stuart Robertson, maybe we'll get to him again later, uh, we put together a two-hour presentation uh, talking about the opera, our experience with the opera, or lack of experience in some cases and um, about our colleagues and so forth. And uh, it's been really, really successful. About, about 60 people sign up for it. About, I think, about a fourth of them cut class. But, you know, that's okay. You know, so anyway, that's, that's what the OLLI program is about. So this last year, we did uh, Exterminating Angel. That was a tough one. Yeah. Uh, I say there's a, our lack of experience, you know. Uh, Stuart and I had never heard it. Had never seen it, and yet we did a two-hour presentation. Now this on is from a, a movie by Louis Buñuel, right? Uh, and uh, who, who who wrote these, this opera? Who, who did the opera? <laughs> I'm, I'm 70 years old. You're not supposed to throw that at me. <laughs> um, it, it'll come to me in a few minutes. Okay, we'll loop back. On yeah, that. but in, anyway, um, a, a very unusual expressionistic opera. You know, uh, from from a very interesting time artistically. Um, Bunuel was a, a colleague and a student friend of Salvador Dali's, or I guess it's more surrealistic than expressionistic, yeah. you know. And um, this is a very interesting opera because it kind of reminds me of that Seinfeld accident, you know, accident incident um, episode where he said, um, you know, we're going to do this show and it's going to be about absolutely nothing. And what happens in The Exterminating Angel is there's a party after an opera and nobody can leave. And they, they sit there for two or three days, and there's no water, there's no food, and they, they turn to cannibalism and all sorts. It gets very bizarre, very bizarre. And then one of them says, wait a minute, we can leave. And so they leave, yeah. you know. And that's kind of what the opera was, you know. But it, was, it, was a, it was a great opera. It was terrific. We saw it at, uh, at our Cineplex. Right. So how fabulous is the, how fabulous is our Cineplex experience? And for people who don't know, at the uh, Del Monte Theater, Saturday mornings, live from the Met. And we sit right in the front. You we know. sit right in the front, or or the Wednesday night repeat, which is... Right, exactly. And we, we'll sit there, and all the students will walk by, and we'll laugh and talk. And what's a real fun thing is that when there's an intermission, which there usually is, is when we go out into the lobby and just sort of stand around and sort of talk further about what's going on and what's happening and that was that's that's a very so we've got moment. kind of uh, so for me the thrill is I get to go with you and I get to learn uh, you know because again having this your your experience to show me the detail that I'm missing and I had this great experience the last time we we went, we went and saw La Bohème 
and uh, with with, with, uh, with the maestro Robertson, right? And seeing the two of you, uh, and and again we've started, or you have started a uh, because of the, of the students showing up during intermission. Everybody's kind of gathered in the hallway, and there's a kind of a Q and A, and it just uh, st started organically. Yeah, yeah. But. Uh, it's like a little forum, sort of. Yeah, yeah. it's very, very. It's it's what we used to have in Los Angeles. Right, it's, it's, exactly. it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I want to say, back in the day, I get to see you all the all the time on stage. But I, the only difference was we were in the same place at the same time, except you were on the stage and I was in the exactly, audience. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it's still like that. Uh, but with with Stuart, so we went to saw the, the Lava Ham, which I I thought um, was a, a really terrific production you know I've only only seen the opera a few times and seeing how you and Stuart who have been I intimately involved you've even staged this opera before yeah, yeah. Uh, felt that the casting was too old there you know it was it was the little minute minute yeah, min minutiae exactly. yeah. that the, the two of you were able to see was was enlightening to me well you know with this whole high definition thing opera has really evolved you know um, not necessarily in a good way but it, it's evolved in that um, I like to say that with these high definition close ups and so forth, that the fat lady has sung. You know, that is the the emphasis now is on the way that the singers look. I think more than the way they sound. Although that's not true in all cases, but um, and the sets, you know, the sets of change. You know, the in interesting the set design and er everything is working for the camera now. It's very yeah. interesting. I saw um, a Tannhäuser a few years back. You know, and. Uh, that struck me because that was a production that I saw for the first time in 1978 at the Met and saw many times there and they couldn't really capture that because the set wasn't designed for high definition TV you know the, the angles and so forth were not uh, everything but when you do with this high def stuff you know where the camera is going to be so you build something behind it as a backdrop and that didn't happen so much so there was a lot more close up and yeah. it, you know it kind of missed uh, it missed a bit, but yeah, it's changed that. It's changed the voices, the voices in opera. You know, I, I remember, <clears throat> I remember back in the um, in the '60s and the '70s when I was just starting out. People would talk about, boy, those were great voices back in the '40s and the '30s. You know, now we're doing the same thing. We're saying, God, the voices of the '70s and the '80s and the '60s are gone, and these new voices. It's become much more. Um, Generic, maybe I would say. You know, the the opera voice has come a lot closer to the musical theater voice. Oh, that's you know? interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And and again, has opera always been in a struggle to survive? Well, I mean, there there was always in because doubt. of the, the lavishness of the production, the grandness of the production. You know, in Europe, it's in doubt. You know, yes. I mean, it's all it's all paid more than fifty percent of the opera. No, no, no. I would say ninety percent of the opera there is paid for by the state. So it's for the people. It's really for the people because it reflects their culture, the Germans, the Italians, the French, the Austrians, the Swiss. Um, in America, it's a European art form, and the state doesn't give any money to it. The, the government gives n almost nothing to it. And, and the more that funds get caught, uh, cut from, from the uh, uh, endowment of the arts and so forth, the more the money has to come first from what they can raise from big donors, and they try and raise 55% from that, and then they try and make up 45% from ticket prices. But, I mean, as prices go up, ticket prices can cost $1,000 at the Met if you want a, a proper seat sometimes. I mean, that just that astounds me. You know, it, it really takes opera away a lot from, from the people that want to see it. And this television thing, has brought it back. This, uh, yeah, the, the high def, yeah. uh, good sound. Yeah. I mean, this is it's 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 a really interesting, but it's a new art form. And it's and it's live. It, it's yeah. live, yeah. and and then you have the interviews backstage, <clears throat> so you have that intimacy. Uh, but it's 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 a lot of fun. It's been real fun to um, to watch little glitches and so forth in a performance. Somebody drops a glass or somebody is in the wrong place at the wrong time. And, you know, if you're really uh, in tune to that, you'll see that kind of stuff. It's, they're, they're small things, but you would never see that in, in a... It's the same thing as when they used to uh, record operas on, on LPs, which they just don't do so much anymore. Um, there was two different kinds. There was the ones that were live, 
like with Toscanini and, and, and these wonderful recordings used to be with Toscanini and Licia Albanese and Victoria de Los Angeles and you know it was live, it was what oh, was happening and then in, more in the 70s and into the, at the end of it uh, it was all done in the studio so I one time did a, I actually did a live performance one time of Araldo by, by Verdi and uh, there was one place where a tenor no, no, it wasn't a tenor. It was an oboe player was playing a very uh, important solo phrase, and it sounded like he swallowed his reed. It was horrible. and uh, But they just went back and they fixed it. You know, they, they took it into the studio and repaired that. Yeah. So. Oh, well, the, the, be, before we move on, I wanted to say one of the other things about the Love of Hem, which was fabulous, is we got to go backstage and see how the sets were moved around. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that was that, was, it was just a backstage at the Met. The Met, was, the Met is unbelievable. The, wow. The, the amount, amount of storage they have there. You know, yeah, you know. That that was really phenomenal. That's they have, It goes up and down. It goes this way and that way and back and forth. You know, They can have three full operas ready to go at the same time. And, that, and then they use the Zeffirelli sets, which they probably have stored off-site. And I guess that's why they, they you know, yeah, you know, yeah. so th they they bring back the original production because then they don't have to do a whole new production, right? Exactly, you know, which which I which I thought was uh, interesting. Now, you and I, I'm I'm about to start. Uh, I have a show called Conversations and Collaborations, and you've been a frequent yeah. guest and collaborator with me right. on. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a large multi-screen uh, project that you've been helping me and advising me and uh, kind of mentoring me on in the last couple of years. Well, you've been also doing the same to me. I mean, it's it's been quite a growth process for the both of us. But we started with uh, we started with the opera Lulu from the uh, Frank Vedican short stories of the uh, Frank Vedican plays of the Lulu cycle. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, that was the opera that we that the the Met did last year uh, and that was just, that was mind-blowing. I think that we were probably two of the only people that actually went and saw it on Saturday and then saw it again, again on, on Wednesday, Wednesday. because it, it was just almost too much to take in. It yeah, was, it, 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 it was mind-blowing, and it was just kind of the height of art. Right. And then uh, because of, I've been using Kurt Weill, Bertel Brecht imagery, uh, we we've also been looking at uh, rise and fall of the city of Mahagoni. We well, you know getting back to Brechtin, you know who who wrote uh, the rise and the fall, the the Abfall and Sch Abstieg und Fall of their Stadt Mahagoni was in German. I did it one time in Los Angeles. A couple of times I've done it, but in Los Angeles with sets by Jonathan Miller with a beautiful English translation, which is the one that I think that we watched yeah. when we watched it on TV. And uh, part of the Brecht thing is audience alienation. Yeah. And uh, Jonathan Miller had this great idea to put the subtitles in German, you know, <laughs> which, I, which you know, you are constantly just shaking your head, going, "Why, why?" You know. So, uh, just because our time's so limited, so one other thing that uh, really interested me was going back to uh, La Mahem and acting, and I, I, yeah. I I'd never. I, I've always looked at uh, the opera singer as a singer, and I've never considered that yeah. the opera singer is an actor. Yeah. And I asked you if you were a good actor, and and you told me that you were, and then you told me about playing the blind person. And let's well, let's talk about that. Well, that, that was, that was, a, to that me. was a, when I do the opera Turandot. You know, I play the, this blind uh, guy named Timur, and uh, I'm telling you, they, what they do is they put gauze over your eyes. And they, they kind of paint it so it looks like flesh color and you can't see your eyes. Yeah. But you can still see through it. But when I get up there and, and I'm being led around, my focus just goes inside that, that gauze thing and I turn blind. It's a very strange thing. Yeah. I loved acting. That to me was was one of the main reasons that I did opera. I was blessed with the voice, but Yeah, so but I never think of the acting part as being so crucial yeah. to it, which it which it is. Well, you know, um, uh, often, you know, I would be in my dressing room where I would come off stage, and there was a little stage manager named Scotty, who was really short, he's about five feet two, and he'd look up to me and he'd go, Lewis, stick around, you know. And I'd say, oh, somebody coming back, say, just somebody wants to see you, you know. And uh, one time, Sophia Loren came back to thank me because she enjoyed my acting. 
And another time I was in my dressing room and there was a knock at the door and I said, come in. And a man walks in and he goes, hi, I'm Jack. <laughs> and I said, I know who you are. He says, I know who you are. <laughs> and, and, and he and I became pretty good friends after that, you know. But um, because to me, s singing is one thing. I mean, to get up there and make noise. But another thing is to lose yourself in a role. My wife says I used to often bring the role home. Yeah, which is <laughs> scary. Know? Yeah, which could be scary if I was a murderer. Or yeah. <laughs> but but the fact, uh, with, with just to wrap this story up, so you'd get back to your dressing room and you couldn't remember sing anything out there because you'd become blind. And you had no, yeah. you had no visual. I had no idea what the set was about, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. so fascinating. Yeah. yeah, I know it was. A, it was a, that was a really a fun, fun uh, experience. That happened in Dallas the first time that happened. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Marnie coming up. I wish we could, you yeah. know. Okay, you know, there's this opera coming called called Marnie. Um, it, it's um, it's composed Muni. by Nico Muni. Muni. M U H N Y. M U H L Y, excuse yeah, me, Muley. Yeah, and um, uh, it's based on on a book by who's the who wrote the book? Graham, uh, uh, Winston Win Graham. Winston Graham. Winston but Grant or Winston Graham? Graham, G R A H A M. Okay, Winston Graham. But um, it was turned into a movie Alfred by Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock yes. did in the fifties, which I thought was very interesting. So now this now uh, I've been reading a lot of the stuff because they've done it now in London, and. Um, there's some question about about its artistry and so forth, but it's riveting, and we're looking forward to it. So that's another one. But as it turns out, uh, I have a former student from Chapman University when I used to teach there in the 90s. Uh, she was I, I used to do her juries and so forth, and she came in. Uh, we we become friends, and and she sent me a note and said she had just gotten a, a job to sing in mute in uh, in Marnie at the Met. She lives, her father lives in Pebble Beach, so she's going to come here, and we're going to talk about it, Stuart and I and her beforehand, and hopefully we can get a good look at the score and get to know the music beforehand. So that's coming up. That's in November. That'll, that'll be fabulous. Yeah. The other operas that we're doing are uh, Fanchula del West by Puccini, which is at the end of uh, um, October, and then a grand finale for this semester is we're doing La Traviata by Verdi, which should be really fun. Um, how, do, how do people find out about <clears throat> this? You can look up O-L-L-I, you know, at Cal State Monterey Bay and uh, find out. Um, it's, uh, you, you'll get a response right back. You know, it, it tells you who to do it. It's Michelle Crompton, C-R-O-M-P-T-O-N, is the director, and uh, she's, she's very social, and she, she'll get right back to you if you send her an email and tell you about it. She'd love to have you in the program. It's very inexpensive. And it's very, very popular, and you meet a lot of people, you know, who are you know, with the same interests that you have. Yeah, and then uh, and the fun of it is that you get to go to these operas, and then you get to go to the intermission. It's uh, and there's a lot of parking at the Domani Center, no problem. Yeah, it's not like going <laughs> to the match. You can always find a parking place, <laughs> especially because they're really early in the morning. Yeah, because they're broadcast live from the Met. Starts at one o'clock there, starts at ten o'clock here, or starts at twelve o'clock there, nine o'clock here. Sometimes if it's Wagner, so it can be. Uh, it's a long, it's a long sit, but it's well worth it. Our our business is done here, sir. Ah, thank you very much. You're watching the Your Town Television program. I'm Mark Bear. We'll be back. Thank you. Uh -huh.